Hello, and welcome this is to part Johnny 6 of Gaming. the complete walkthrough of the remastered version of Super Mario RPG for the Nintendo Switch. After getting the 5th star, return to Seaside Town, and after the cutscene, the Smithy Gang will steal your 5th star, and you have to get that back before we get the 6th star. Have Peach and Mallow in your party, save your game at the inn, then exit at the top left of the town. After the cutscene you will face a boss. He is weak to lightning so always use shocker when using Mallow. Mario will be fine with normal attacks and Peach heals and regenerates FP when needed. He has an unblockable water attack that damages all the party and he does the flamestone and will o wisp attacks. After a while he will create a duplicate of himself. The original will start using physical attacks and the duplicate starts using the powerful spell attacks. So if you see him using his spear then that's the original and concentrate your attack on the original. Also, you can use Mallow's thought ability, and the fake one will say he's not the genuine article. Pick up the shed key and you can rescue the real citizens of Seaside Town from the house at the bottom of the stairs. After the cutscenes you can visit the rest of the shops.
In the weapons and armor shop, buy the ribbit stick for Malo, double punch for Gino, and the parasol for Peach. The right hand shops. The first shop is a supply shop that you can use to replenish your supplies if you need to. The next shop on the right can give you rarer mushrooms if you trade in normal mushrooms. It's completely random for one of your mushrooms to be one of the rare mushrooms and you get yourself a rare reward. If you have a ripping mushroom you get a rock candy, berry mushrooms will get you maple syrup and flower mushrooms will get you a flower tab. You can go on the shop on the left to keep buying mushrooms if you got the money and you can come back when you have lots of coins to spend. The shop at the end of the right hand side is an accessory shop, buy any you need if you missed any. Head to the house on the left hand side with the frog shop and the toad will tell you the next location. Exit the town and head up on the world map to Land's End. Swap Bowser for Malo in the party and use the cannon to jump to the upper platform. Go onto the yellow moving platform and jump up at the highest point to get an invisible chest containing a red essence. Then exit to the right. Head right into the cannon and shoot yourself to the upper platform. You will fall in the square that will release some enemies. Defeat the enemies and exit to the right. The enemies you face is the Chows, more powerful versions of canines, but they are weak and they can cause poison with the claw attack. And the Octavaders, stronger versions of Octolots. These ones are weak against fire and strong against lightning and they use electric and water attack. Peach's new weapon, 
Press A as she brings up the umbrella for her extra damage attack. Another two enemies are ant enemies that are weak against ice and they use their weapons to attack, and think flowers, which are stronger versions of snapdragons. They are weak against fire and make them a priority target as they can recover HP and put several statuses on your characters like scarecrow and sleep. Jump up to the left of the square hole to activate a hidden yellow platform and then go back into the cannon and use it to get on the yellow platform and then it takes you to the tallest platform and jump up on the chest when you're underneath and then jump on the tall platform and get an invisible chest on the left. Swap Peach for Mallow and then exit to the right. Jump over the platforms and continue on to the right. There's a few new enemies you will face. Stronger versions of the Arachne. They are weak to ice and they can inflict Scarecrow and Poison with their attacks. And you face stronger versions of Geckos. These enemies are permanently confused and will attack the enemies randomly. They are weak against ice. They can cause the sleep status. Having Malo in the party with the Snowy special attack will wipe out the group of enemies. Rotate the left analog stick for more damage. This section is full of bee enemies, stronger versions of buzzards. They can inflict the mushroom and poison states and will flee if you defeat other enemies first. Head to the right and jump on the second purple flower and then go to jump from it to the third purple flower and you'll get a hidden chest containing a frog coin. Exit the area on the right. In the new area, go all the way to the left corner to pick up a flower tab. Then jump in the hole in the cave to get some bonus optional items. Head left and you can face a new enemy, small piranha plants, strong against jump and most statuses effects. And you can face the traditional flying shy guys called bezos. Weak against ice, they can cause silence and attack with their tridents.
Jump up on the boxes in the middle of the area to reach a chest containing a frog coin. Another new enemy you can face is a plant-like creature called Criffid. Stronger versions of artichokers, and they are weak against ice. Head to the top left of the area, defeat the wolf creature and jump up to get a hidden chest to get a frog coin and then exit at the bottom right. Head through the linear path, jump on the barrel and it will roll down so you can get back up. Another new enemy you can face is a stronger version of Frogogs, and they are also weak to ice and has a poison attack. Get the chest and use the spring to return to the pipe vault and jump on the top platforms to reach a chest containing cricket jam and then teleport to tadpole pond and give the cricket jam to the frog sage to get 10 frog coins then return to land's end and return to the area with the bees and a save point. Back in this area, go on the spinning pink flower to reach the top area and keep using the flowers and exit on the top right. Here you've got a mini game you can play with three difficulties to choose from. You get better rewards for each increase in difficulty, but nothing too major so don't worry about it if you don't want it. Choose the easiest and jump over the platforms and the bullet bills on higher difficulties and exit to the right. You will now be in a desert area. Talk to the rat and exit to the right. And from here is a specific way to reach your next destination, which is Monstro Town. It's to use the various desert whirlpools to reach it. You will have a choice and look for an ant that pokes out of them. That's the correct one to go down. You can battle the ants. Also, you can jump on them to get coins and a frog coin if you bounce, I think, four times in a row. Keep moving from area to area using the desert whirlpools with the ant peeking out. If you get it wrong, you just have to keep doing it and eventually you will reach an underground cave.
You go down and get the superstar and zoom to the right and defeat all the enemies, including the wall of wolves blocking the exit. Keep zooming to the right and drop down the hole. You might be able to defeat a few more enemies before the star runs out. Continue to the right and right again and talk to the merchant and give him 50 coins for a clue. You got three statues with their tongues sticking out and yes you can activate them in any order but you get different rewards for different combinations. Get the coins from the chest and activate the right, left and then the middle one. Jump up and exit to the top right and then go down the pipe. Get the coins from the chest and exit through the gate to the right. Collect more coins from the chest and get the frog coin from the chest at the bottom right and there is another frog coin in a hidden chest to the left and a third frog coin can be accessed by jumping to the highest point and jump into the first chest and then jump up for the hidden chest then exit to the right. Talk to the merchant to the right and then activate the statue and if you get a message saying I'm not accepting visitors you have to go back to the left and back again to reset the note and keep hitting the statue and it personally took me 20 times hopefully it will be quicker for you but it will happen when the note says I'm hungry and then take the lift down to face Bellum again. Have Peach and Mallow in your party so you don't get strong clones to face. Put the wake up pin on Mallow as Bellum trades Scarecrow for the sleep status and when he eats a party member he will clone them so you will have to face them as well but keep your attacks at Bellum. Use Peach to heal and regenerate FP and use Mario Super Jump or Fireball in Mallow's Shocker.
Press the green button to open the gate and then you can speak to the rat again and then enter the pipe to access Monstro Town. Enter the first door on the left and talk to the toad and then head upstairs. Speak to the starfish and you can speak to the chest to find out how many hidden treasure chests you have got so far. Then go back downstairs and the toad will talk to you and send some paratroopers to help you at land's end to access the next level of the game. Exit the house and head to the next door to the right and you can speak to the wolf to get a reward for doing 30 or 100 jumps in a row. These jumps mean the super jump special ability that Mario has and if you want the rewards and the best armor in the game for Mario, the super suit, you best do it on an enemy like a Spidey who is immune to jumps as you will stop jumping if all the enemy's HP is gone. Talk to the thwomp about 5 times so he crashes down and shakes the building. This will loosen a key that will drop and you can pick it up when you exit the building. Go into the shop 2 doors down and buy the new weapon and armor for Bowser. Then head to the next building on the right and activate the light and sleep in the bed and you'll get a cutscene and then we will get the 3 optional flags for a reward. Fast travel to Rose Town in the Tadpole Pond region and look behind the welcome sign for the first clue. Then fast travel to Mario's Pad in the Mushroom Kingdom region. Go in his house and check by his bed for the second flag. Then fast travel to Yoster Island, then go to the start of the racetrack and the final flag can be found in the O of the word Gull. And then fast travel back to Monster Town and return to the bed to sleep and get your reward, the Ghost Medal Accessory. To the very right is a hole in the ground which is a save point and if you're about the same level as I am, level 17 for most characters, then you can take on an optional boss twice but save the third and final time until about level 20. Head up the stairs and first you'll face Jagger first. He has a powerful punch and is strong against jump and fire. Make sure you have a healer and you can easily defeat him with normal attacks as long as you heal up.
Now you can face Jinx in battle. Use Bowser and Peach in your party. Jinx is a very fast character, strong against all the elements and status effects. One of his attacks when he multiple punches you, wait until he uppercuts you in the air and press A to block. He does triple kick which is a fast move and you gotta be quick to block that attack. Once he's had enough HP depleted, he will use Valor up and his defense will be stronger. Use normal attacks with Mario and Bowser and have Peach to heal. You can speak to Jinx to battle him again and he'll have some new attacks to his arsenal. Quicksilver and Silver Bullet, extremely high powered attacks that unless you block it, it will kill you instantly. Thank you. 
Exit the dojo and enter the last door on the right. To the left of the flower bush is an invisible chest containing a frog coin. Then return to the entrance of Monstro Town all the way to the left and return to where you had to set the switch to be able to defeat Bellon. This time you want to exit to the left of the switch to reset it and you want the note saying it's bedtime and you return to the yellow square to be taken down and get a room full of loot. Go to the map and head to Tadpole Pond in the Tadpole Pond region. Then head to the very right and go to where you play melodies to play the final melody. Follow the video for the right Tadpole locations and that will give you the final card and you can buy Cocoa Cola from the shop Tadpoles on the left. And the final melody, you can do what you want, it does not affect anything. Fast travel to Land's End and you will have to go through the area again until you get to the area where you have to follow the ants in the quicksand.
Now here, we don't want to reach the underground section that leads to Montreux Town. We need to find the exit that will bring us to a giant wall to climb to reach the next area. Follow the ants through the quicksand until you reach the right area. This is the right area. Look at the top right and you will see an exit with trees on either side. And this will lead to a wall that you use paratroopers to climb up. The faster you do it, the better rewards you can get. You can get a trooper medal that increases your melee damage by 50% and increases the speed stat. You can either do it fast and quickly jump from one shell to the next. The shell will move when you jump on it and will stop. And you can mostly just casually walk to the next shell if you are doing it slowly. Head into the right hand side pipe. In the second area there is a hidden chest in the bottom left corner that holds a frog coin. Then head down the left pipe. Head to the bottom pipe and get a chest with a flower and then head back to the previous area and exit at the top left. This area you will come across some plants that will grow and each of the pipes leads to some goodies. You will have to allow the enemies to grow and then defeat the enemies before you go down the pipes. You would have faced these enemies in Land's End. Go down the nearest pipe at the bottom right and at the end of the area is a hidden treasure containing a Krokoa Cola and the other treasure contains a mini game that will reward you with treasure if you match up the symbols or you can face an enemy. Go down the top pipe, you will face some golden chomp chomp enemies. Defeat these as this will help to unlock the great guy's casino. They are weak to thunder. Once defeated, this is completely optional. Jump up to where the chomps were to activate a yellow platform and jump up to the wall and exit and this will unlock the casino but you will need to do something else before you can access the casino. Fast travel or head to Booster Tower and go through the tower until you bump into Knife Guy. It's quite far up into Booster Tower.
Once you talk to Knife Guy, he will challenge you to a simple game of which hand is the yellow ball. You have to guess rightly 12 times in a row. You have to judge which side is the yellow ball. And that's the hand to pick to get the bright card needed to enter the casino. And then return to the casino. The casino has three mini games that you can play. The first, talk to the toad on the left and you will play the matching symbol game, like the ones you get from going in Bean Valley's pipe. It doesn't cost you anything and you can do it as much times as you want. The second mini game is a memory card game where you have to memorise where all five party members are and you get asked for three of them and if you get it correctly you get a random prize. The final mini game is Great Guy himself. It's a simple guess of looking the opposite way of him. If you want a good reusable battle item, you have to beat him 100 times and you get the Star Egg, which can do 100 damage to all enemies and you can reuse it as much time as you want. It's a bit boring doing the game over 100 times. All I did was put some music on and hold the analog stick left and press A until I finally got it. Return to Bean Valley and make your way to the area where the plants grew from the Shy Guy and go down the rest of the pipes. The very left pipe I faced the rare treasure chest enemy that you can get from the matching symbol game. It's a tough monster, it's weak against jump attacks and strong against all the element and status effects. So use Mario's jump. The scream attack will cut a party's member attack and defense by half and has a powerful biting attack and various spell attacks. It will also summon an enemy called the Ginny, weak against jump and ice and strong against thunder and fire. It uses powerful magic spells and a couple of melee attacks.
The right pipe contains a mini game chest to the left, and under the stairs is either a chest or a frog coin hidden in the corner. And to the left of the bottom of the steps is a hidden chest containing a red essence. And finally, up from the chest, you can use a spring to get a frog coin and then return to the plant area. Up ahead is a boss fight, swap Mallow for Bowser, put the true form pin on Mario and the wake up pin on Mallow. The boss is weak against ice, so use Mallow's snow attack. Normal attacks for Mario and Peach to heal up. Every time you defeat the plant, it will be watered, and you will face two Similaxes, and then three, and then finally you will face a giant version. The Similaxes use biting and fireball attacks. The giant version can use a petal attack that can turn all party members into mushrooms. After the battle, make sure you read the note that's dropped to get a seed. Then go down the pipe and activate the brick to grow a vine and you will climb up it.
In the beanstalk area, you can face two new enemies. Enemies dressed up as birds, possibly. They are weak against ice and can be stunned with lightning. They have a strong offensive attack. The other enemy, giant versions of Koopa Troopers, and they have a bounce attack, which takes two turns to charge. So target the giant Koopas first so they don't do the move. If they do, they bounce a few times and then press A just above your head. They are weak against jump. Climb up the beanstalk by just jumping on it, then jump on the orange vine. Jump on the cloud and then finally the blue vine. Grab a frog coin on the way as well. Get the chest containing a flower and climb up the red vine and get a frog coin from the top. Then go to the cloud in the middle and climb up the green vine on the right for a few coins and then the yellow one on the left and get a frog coin on the way. Climb up the blue vine, there is a few more enemies guarding the vines that I already defeated. Climb up the red vine until the top and then jump on the moving yellow platform and then jump to the green vine on the left. Get the two chests, you get a defence scarf which I put on Mario and drop down the hole on the right, get another two chests and drop down the hole. Use the spring to get to another area, then use the spring on the left to take you to Nimbus Land and you'll get a cutscene. After the cutscene, head into the shop on the left. Buy the Mega Glove and Fluffy Shirt for Mario, Sticky Glove and Fluffy Pants for Malo, Hand Glove and Fluffy Cake for Gino, and Warfan and Fluffy Dress for Peach. Go in the right corner of the shop, climb up the boxes to get a hidden treasure containing a frog coin. Exit the shop and go in the inn at the left hand side, save your game, rest if you need to.
Exit the inn and go up to the house that's to the left of the palace and go up to speak to the homeowner and you'll get a long cutscene and you'll be in the palace disguised as a golden statue. You'll want to head left and save at the save point and if you continue left you'll have to run automatically back to the statue room and there will be a sequence where you can get an accessory. It's completely optional and you can buy it later anyway. To get the accessory you have to stay still and avoid the big bird's attack so you can only jump when he's about to attack you. If you jump when not needed you will fail the segment and will have to fight him. He's not a hard boss and basic attacks will be fine. When he comes for you you will have to jump just as he's about to peck at you and then he will come back and do it again after the last statue and as soon as he pecks the second statue he will run at you and peck you again and then a fourth time after the last statue. When he leaves the room, he will actually double back. You can see him go across the screen, run from the opposite end and try to peck you again. I didn't jump in time, but you can have one mistake. You will have to do another round and it's exactly the same as the previous round. Go back to the save room and pick up the feather. Save your game and head to the left and get a short cutscene. You will drop your disguise and navigate the palace. Head through to the door on the right and you will come across some new enemies. Green shy guys. These are not that powerful but they have musical magic which inflicts status effects so make them a priority. Another enemy is the stronger version of orb users and these can use the mega heal spells so unless they come with green shy guys make them a priority as well. They are weak against jump and finally you have a sleeping enemy that you don't want to hit with any attacks or you will wake him up and he will join in attacking you. Splash damage from attacks does not wake him up so always defeat at last. They attack you with their forks. Another enemy you can face is pinwheels and before you face them in battle they can blow you off the edge when they spin so don't go in front of them. Attack them at the side. They are fast but weak enemies so they attack fast and you have to be quick to block. They are also strong against thunder. Another enemy is a stronger version of the Lucos jellyfish. It is weak against fire and strong against ice. They do several powerful ice spells and if you do a special attack against them they will counter with the magic spell. Continue on the linear path. Get the mushroom from the chest. Enemies can be hidden in the bird statues and will attack you. Continue on to the next room on the right.
In this area, there will be lots of paths to take and enemies to defeat. The shamans are weak against physical attacks and strong against special attacks, but special attacks can cause them to flee. They have a variety of spells that they can cast against you. Head to the left corner and get the chest with the flower, then exit at the door that's to the right of the big Cooper, then through the door on the right. Here you'll face a stronger version of the red bird-like enemies. They have high magic resistance and are strong against ice and weak against fire, and if you do physical attacks on them, you have a chance of causing them to be confused, and they will attack their allies. Grab the chest with the flower and then return to the area with the Big Cooper. Then take the door that's to the left of the Big Cooper and follow it and you will come across some stairs. Down the stairs, defeat the Jawful and jump where he was to get a hidden chest. Just to the left is a small square that you can walk to the right and then up to get a hidden chest, then exit to the right. Talk to the only cloud person in blue to get a flower tab and then the cloud person at the top left corner to get the key and save your game and return to the area with the big Cooper. Take the left exit and then drop down to get a chest with a flower. Then you have to return to the area with the big Cooper. Head left, battle the enemies, then keep heading right with the statues and then follow the linear path. Go and defeat the big Cooper, which is three big Coopers in battle. Go through the door and it's time to face a boss, a classic boss from Super Mario Bros. 2. First, attack the egg normally until Birdo hatches from it. To defeat Birdo, if you're strong enough, don't bother defending. I'm pretty sure you can beat Birdo with just normal physical attacks. But the mechanics of the fight is you have to defend against the egg attacks. If you do a successful defense, you will bounce the egg back and then you can destroy that egg to damage Birdo.
Pick up the key after battle, exit to the right, but watch out for a pinwheel that can blow you off the edge. Then defeat the enemy and then jump on top of the chest so you can jump up and get a hidden chest. Jump back to the upper balcony and exit to the right. You must read the notes by the door to activate the cutscene and then follow the shy guy to the right and then face three big Koopa troopers. Continue right and keep going right after the cutscene, save at the save point and follow the linear path. In the next corridor, avoid all the enemies and in the middle of the corridor, you can see a square shadow on the ground. Jump up to activate a yellow platform and then get a superstar. Jump down and defeat the enemies and run to the right and defeat all the enemies, including the big bird, and then continue right and you will be back to the cloud section. Prepare for a boss fight. Use Mario, Bowser, make sure Bowser is in the middle of the party setup, and Peach, and equip the true form pin on Mario and the ghost pin on Bowser. Jump on the spring, then the spring on the left, and you will be returned to Nimbus Land and activate a boss fight. Dodo will take Bowser away for a one-on-one -on -one fight. Use Terrorize to debuff his stats. It will attack with its beak and cause silence. Use Bowser's normal attacks to defeat him. They will both join the other battle in a bit. The next stage of the fight will be Mario and Peach against Valentina. She can cast 9 different spells. She has weak defence so it should not take long to make her flee. Use Peach's normal attacks and Mario's jump. When the other two return to battle, just concentrate on Valentina and use Bowser's normal attacks.
After the fight, the king and queen will point where the next star can be found. Exit the palace and go in the house on the right hand side to bump into Croco and he will drop the Echo Signal Ring, a stronger version of the Signal Ring and will tell you how many treasures are in a room. Exit the house and not far from the entrance to that house is an invisible ground you can walk through to see the gardening shy guy and you will get some fertilizer. Fast travel to Rose Town in the Tadpole Pond region. Head right up to the top and exit and enter the house and give the gardener the seed and the fertilizer and a beanstalk will appear. Go outside the house, climb the beanstalk and get the lazy shells. This is a weapon and armor for Mario. Go ahead and equip them. I was strong enough to face Jinx the third and final time in Monstro Town. Be about level 21 to face him, and make sure you have enough pick-me-ups as he will be able to instantly defeat your party members. He's much stronger with a strong new move added to all his previous move, called Bombs Away, a very fast fireball. Also, Mario has a new weapon, a big red shell that he kicks up in the air and for extra damage press A just before Mario kicks it at the enemy. Once you defeat Jinx, you can get the Jinx belt accessory and equip it on Mario and he will be a very strong character now.
Time to reach the new area. Return to Nimbus Land using fast travel and fall down the hole. Then fall down the left hand side hole next to the sign and then talk to the guards and they will let you through. Jump in the hot springs to heal you up and then off the edge on the right hand side to dive into the volcano. The first enemies you face in the volcano is stronger versions of magmites, weak against ice and jump, and strong against fire. Most of the enemies in the volcano is weak against ice and strong against fire, so it would be a good idea to have Mallow in your party for his snowy attack. The magmas are very weak creatures. Jump across the platforms to the right to reach the other side. If you ever fall in lava, it will just take you to the beginning. Get the two chests and you will be attacked by enemies, stronger versions of lava bubbles. Return across the lava platforms and jump up to the top left area and exit. Another enemy you can face is the third and final strongest version of the spiky enemies. Jump up to the exit, two more enemies you can face, both stronger variants of previous enemies. The Vormers, like Dry Bones, can only be defeated by special attacks, and they don't disappear in the dungeon either. Grab the treasure with the flower in the next area, and keep going through the linear path getting another chest. Here, I faced another stronger variant of the Ant. These can do the Ender Bubble move, and can cast Vigor up. In this area, get the chest with the superstar and run to the right, defeating as much enemies as you can, and quickly jumping up so you can defeat the big stone enemy. Proceed up the volcano, and then I face one of the big stone enemies in battle with a lava enemy. They are strong enemies with two sections that you have to defeat, the head and the body. If you defeat the body first, the head will defeat itself. As ever for the volcano level, it's weak against ice. To get the green coin, you will have to jump in the lava to get it, and then be brought at the start of the area. Exit to the right and jump to the platforms to get to the other side, while avoiding the lava bubbles coming out, as when you battle them, it will ruin your jump momentum, 
and when you finish the fight you will fall in the lava and return to the start of the area. To get the frog coin at the end, jump down to the lava on the right to be brought up to the coin and then exit to the right. This area used the platforms which will disappear after a while when stood on to get the two frog coins, then exit to the left and then to the left again. Get the two chests on the way up to the save point and save your game, and then exit to the right to take on a powerful enemy. Technically not a boss, and like the big troopers, the powerful attacks it uses takes a turn to charge up by this point in the game. With defeat and most enemies on the way, Mario's party is very strong against monsters. Keep heading right and follow the only path you can take, taking out another golem creature and strumpet along the way. And finally, you will reach a chest with coins and talk to a biker toad. The toad is a shop, so buy any supplies you need, buy all the fire armour for all the characters except for Mario, and then exit to the right. Save your game and follow the linear path. Cross the lava using the platforms that will fall after a while. And once you are past that, get ready for a boss fight. Swap Peach for Bowser and put the safety ring on Mallow.
The boss is a lot of lava bubbles formed into a dragon. Keep using snowy attacks as Mallow and heal as Peach and use Mario's normal attacks. He will attack using his head. Do some powerful flame magic and summon little enemies that will explode on you. Ignore these. Mallow's snowy attack will take care of them. Once he's defeated, he will come back for a second phase as an undead dragon and then use Mallow's shocker attack as the undead dragon is now weak to it. Swap Bowser back with Peach and stick the defense scarf on him. Head right and you'll get a cutscene and you'll have to keep going through the linear path. There is no time limit or enemies so just keep going and when you get to the spring get ready for a boss battle.
The boss is a reference to the Power Rangers in Zordon. Also, the five rangers are a mirror of your party of five. You will have to defend yourself against a lot of attacks at once. They mainly use their axes with different timings of when they hit you with them for you to block. Occasionally, bombs and magic will be used and will be taking them out one by one, starting with the pink ranger, as she has a lot of healing spells and she is weak against fire, so use Mario's fireball. At this point in the game, and probably because of the way I used bonus stats, Mario is better with his weapon than any of his special move. Use Bowser's AoE attacks like Terrorize and Poison first, and then his Mecha Koopa special. A few will be strong against it, but the others won't, and this will lessen the damage you take and slowly take away their health. Then take out the green one next, he has the most powerful spells, and then the other three won't take long to defeat. I used Mario's Ultra Jump to work well against the yellow one, and damage the other ones as well. Once all five has been defeated, then there will be the second phase of the fight. Use your special and then the blade will use an unblockable beam attack and just keep doing normal attacks and it will be defeated. That's the end of part 6, join us in the next part where we get the final star. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel where there are achievement and trophy guides, secrets and tips from the latest releases to classic retro games. Thanks for watching.